Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to make a very delicious and famous Odia recipe and that's kakora. This recipe is made with a cooked dough of suji or semolina which is then stuffed with a sweet stuffing and deep fried. So let's start. For the dough I have here one cup of semolina or suji and then I have about two tablespoons of granulated sugar. 1 teaspoon of salt and then finally I have uh, about 1 tablespoon of ghee or clarified butter. For 1 cup of uh, semolina I will be using 2 cups of water to make the dough. All the ingredients are in. The next step is to cook the dough. To make the dough I have heated here about um, 2 cups of water and you can see tiny bits um, in the water. Those are just um, some tiny bits of kunit and uh, I have heated this water it's quite warm now now to this I'm adding sugar salt and ghee goes salt one teaspoon of salt two tablespoons of sugar and finally the ghee let the ghee melt and the water get a little heated up water is quite hot now so I have finally added one cup of semolina and uh, continuously stir it you can see Immediately uh, the grains of semolina will soak up all the moisture and this mixture is going to be very thick gooey. Keep on stirring it and after adding um, the semolina I have already uh, put the heat to low because if the heat is high then it's going to bubble and it's going to splutter and uh, believe me if you get a smallest tiniest bit of this uh, mixture you are going to get really bad burn since this mixture is quite thick so be very careful and I'm going to keep it um, cooking on low heat till it's reduced to a very nice soft dough consistency so keep on stirring it this is quite hard you know it takes a little muscle power to you know keep on stirring it because it's a lot of um, mixture and the mixture is quite thick so you need to you know keep on stirring it continuously I have only added here two tablespoons of sugar so this mixture is not going to be very sweet so if you want a very sweet dough in that case you can add about four to five tablespoons of uh, sugar to this you can see here the mixture has thickened I'm going to cook it for some more time till it gets even more you know thicker almost like a soft dough so keep on stirring it I remember my mother used to make it in a normal kadai and um, no matter how much you stir still you'll find a very thick coating on the bottom of the kadai but today I'm using a non-stick so my work becomes really really easy and I would always recommend to uh, use a thick bottomed non-stick pan because then you can actually take small breaks in between. So always a thick bottom non-stick pan comes really really handy if you are making such kind of dough. It is really very important to add a proper uh, quantity of water because if you use too less water then um, the grains of suji will not be properly saturated and you will not find a very soft dough and you know likewise if you add too much of water then it will be really really difficult for you to you know uh, cook it because you have to cook it even more for a longer period of time and that will be very tedious so always add a um, proper amount of uh, water to the semolina it's almost done quite thick now so this dough is ready it's come as a single mass it's a very soft dough and uh, remember once it's getting cold it's going to be a little more stiffer so this is ready I'm going to switch off the heat and I'm going to let it get completely cold and then I'll start making the pita the dough is ready I'm going to make the stuffing that we need for this recipe for the stuffing I have here half a cup of chena and then for sweetness I have here about half a cup of uh, granulated sugar and about quarter cup of uh, powdered jaggery 
mix together you can add this sweetness according to your taste and then I have one cup of freshly grated coconut three cardamoms crushed one teaspoon of black pepper powder and apart from all these ingredients I'll be using one teaspoon of ghee while making the stuffing so that's it now for the stuffing I'm going to cook the chena first so I have heated a pan add in the chena and the reason I'm cooking this chena is just to get rid of other extra moisture I want the chena to release all the moisture and become um, a little drier because I want the stuffing to be pretty dry so that I can store the pita for a few days as soon as you add the chena you can see here it has started releasing the moisture so I'm going to keep uh, stirring it till it dries up completely and this is very natural once you cook chena it kind of gets into lumps you can see there are lumps almost like a scrambled egg so what I'm going to do once this mixture is completely dry uh, this chena is completely dry I'm going to mash it a little so that all the lumps are gone so this is done you can see it's pretty dry so I'm going to switch off the heat and take it out and the next step is to make the you know the uh, coconut stuffing now to make the coconut stuffing I have heated here one teaspoon of ghee and now goes three crushed up cardamoms fry it for about few seconds that's it the next thing is to add the freshly grated coconut and I'm adding here one cup of it and if you don't find freshly grated coconut then you can use the you know the normal frozen grated coconut as well and um, I'm going to cook this uh, coconut for a few minutes till it dries up a little not quite completely dry up just a little drier so that I have a dry stuffing there are two reasons why I always prefer a little drier stuffing for the kakara pitha first being you know it's very easy for you to store it for few days like it stays fresh for about two to three days if you have a very soggy stuffing inside then the stuffing normally um, gets spoiled you know in a day so if you have a you know quite dry stuffing then there is every chance that your pitha will stay fresh for about like few days and the second reason is that uh, since we make a uh, you know soft uh, dough if you have a soggy stuffing inside then there is every chance that you may find um, you know cracked pita because the sugar will start dissolving and it will release some moisture and the stuffing will make sure that you know you have cracks in the pita so instead of a wet stuffing if you have dry stuffing then there would be no question of having you know cracks in your pita so the coconut is pretty dry now finally I have added the sugar and uh, the jaggery powdered jaggery and once you add these two ingredients give it a good mix and then I'm going to switch off the heat if you cook it further then uh, the sugar will dissolve and uh, by the time this mixture is cold again the sugar is going to crystallize back then instead of having a dry um, stuffing you'll have something like a coconut burfi so don't cook it further once you add the sugar and jaggery give it a good mix switch off the heat and this stuffing would be ready so finally this is well mixed I have already switched off the heat and the final ingredient to go is the crushed up uh, black pepper powder I'm sorry the crushed up black pepper and then I'm going to add the chena that I have already cooked. I'll just mash up the chena, add it to this coconut and then I'll just mash everything well and the stuffing would be ready. So this is it, this is ready. Stuffing is ready and the dough is also ready. The next thing is to stuff it and then I'll deep fry it. Now to make the pita, I will take a handful of the dough. But before that, just grease your hand with a little water. So that the dough doesn't stick to your hand take a handful of the mixture and I'm going to just give it a good mash again so that the mixture becomes even more softer and uh, after giving it a good mash I'm going to roll it well if you have seen my previous video on how to make monda pita is this just the similar process of making this pita so once it's well mashed 
I'm going to roll it well like this so that it doesn't have any cracks and now I'm going to give it a shape of a bowl once it's getting the shape of a bowl I'm going to stuff um, the coconut mixture inside and you know then I'm going to just shut the ends so this is just like a bowl now goes the stuffing I have added here this would be about two teaspoons of stuffing but again it depends on your taste um, if you want lots of stuffing inside then you, you can add more or if you want a very thick coating then you know you can add a little bit of stuffing now just gather all the edges and then as you can see I'm I'm just closing the ends just twist and close the ends like this and if you find any cracks just take a little water and seal it so that you don't have any cracks at all if you have cracks then while frying it oil will start getting inside the pita so just make sure it's nice and clean no um, cracks so this pita is ready just a tiny bit of coconut on top that's why it's looking a little brownish but this pita is done without any cracks so I'm going to form pitas like this with rest of the dough this recipe will make something around 15 uh, to 17 um, you know big sized pitas but then again it depends on your taste if you want really smaller pitas then it will make about 20 this pita is made two ways uh, you can either steam the pita or else you can deep fry it today I'm going to make the deep fried version but if you want to steam it you can always do it but I somehow find um, you know deep frying it makes it much tastier to deep fry the pita I have heated here about four cups of vegetable oil now to check the temperature I have added just a tiny bit of the dough you can see after adding the dough immediately it started popping up so this oil is ready to fry very gently slide in the pitas and I'm going to deep fry the pitas on high heat till it gets golden and brown since the dough is already cooked you don't have to cook it further just a crispy coating on top and the pita is good to go this is my brother's uh, favorite pita so whenever he is in India the first thing my mother is going to do is this pita though I'm not quite fond of it because it's pretty sweet and I'm not like I don't have a very sweet tooth so this is not one of my favorites but you know once a while I even I like to eat this pita so be very careful while you are uh, frying the pita because it's quite a lot of oil so once these pitas are golden brown I'm going to take it out and then I'll just put it on a paper towel and uh, drain the excess oil yes you can see here the pitas have turned nice golden and brown so these are ready i'm going to take it out suji kakura is ready this dish is normally served hot but don't eat it as soon as you fry it because if you take a bite the inside is still steaming hot so be careful whenever you are taking a bite you need to ensure that it's a little cold since this pita is deep fried, you can store it for a few days, about two or three days. So do try this very, very delicious pita and don't forget to let me know about it. We will meet next time and don't forget to subscribe. Till then, bye-bye.